For today's recipe, the tortilla ingredients that you will need are one half cup water, three eggs, eight ounces of cream cheese softened, I'm just going to zap that in the microwave, one fourth cup heavy cream, one fourth teaspoon onion powder, one half teaspoon baking powder, one fourth teaspoon garlic powder and one half cup of carb quick bake mix and I've talked about that in previous uh, episodes you, you usually do tend to have to order it online but it's worth the shipping price it's just it's a low carb baking mix and probably one of the only ones that they still make alright let's mix this up alright so you're going to take your softened cream cheese Plop it on in there. And, and you're just going to beat it until it is smooth. If you if you zap it in the microwave long enough, it's gonna be really easy to to make it smooth while uh, mixing it. If you let it soften naturally, then it's gonna be more chunky. Okay, so then you are going to add the eggs. just kind of goes in you want to well you want to add your dry ingredients first you want to add the carb quick the baking powder and the seasonings until it's smooth the ingredients which is the water and the cream. And there, as easy as that, is the batter for your tortillas. Let's mix up. All right, before we start with the tortillas, make sure you have some wax paper on hand so that when the uh, tortillas are stacking up, you put, you're going to put a piece of wax paper between each one. So, 
and start over medium heat. Spray your pan. Also spray the utensils you're going to use to turn them. It just makes it easier on you. I don't get so much sticking going on. Over medium heat, you're going to take a fourth of a cup of your batter. And it's going right in the middle. And then once that's in there, twirl it around. Tortilla. <laughs> and then just let it sit there. It's going to start to uh, bubble. You, basi you basically want to treat it like a pancake. And it's just a matter of practice, really. Knowing uh, every stove varies as far as uh, the heat and, and all of that good stuff. So. Just keep checking it, really. Yeah, nowhere near. There, see how it's starting to become more solid. It just takes a little time. It's not something you want to blast the heat on and rush it because then you're going to burn the bottom and it's just not going to be any good. When I do these, it's usually on a weekend because this is a time-consuming recipe because this makes 12 of these. And so you figure doing this times 12, huh. yeah, I just put some TV on in the background and watch as I go. Alright, that's really starting to look firm. Whoop. And inevitably, you're going to break a couple of them. Unless you're really, really good, which I'm not. failed attempt to flip it. Well, this is pretty much how the first one turned out last time I made it too. It was all ripped and tortilla <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination, but at least I flipped it without it getting torn in half. Alright, so have a plate or something ready to flip this onto, and then put a piece of wax paper on top of it, and then we'll work on, and then you just keep going, basically. It, it makes about 12, it's, the recipe said 12, mine came out to more like 13 or 14, I think. But towards the end, I was making them a little bit bigger because I think I was going really skimpy on the on the batter at first. You just check the bottom. Yep, it's done. Take it off. Plate. 
spray again, and repeat. Yeah, I don't think I had the pan properly warmed up before either, so there you go. This is going to go a lot faster now. <laughs> Should look like. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit though. That's going a little bit fast for my taste. I want it set, but I don't want it burned. My heat was too high. I burned the uh, bottom of this one. It's still going to be fine because it's not charcoal. It's just a little browner than I wanted. So I'm going to set my heat down a little bit. Pick it up a little bit. See how the bottom's doing. And this one's good. Okay, this is very much a case of lather, rinse, repeat. Just keep going until you run out of batter. And then we'll move on to making the actual enchiladas. For the second part of today's recipe, you will need the tortillas that you just made, a 10 ounce can of green enchilada sauce, I use mild, but it's whatever your preference, 10 ounces of spinach, chopped, I used fresh and put it in the, the food processor, but you can use frozen, just make sure you, when you thaw it, that you drain out all of the water one cup ricotta cheese, one half cup sour cream, and one cup shredded cheddar cheese. All right, so the filling for the enchiladas, you're going to mix together your spinach, The ricotta, plop, and the sour cream.
When I made these last time, I had some uh, pre-cooked chicken that I shredded and put in these, and that was really good, but I don't have any of that today, so we're getting vegetarian style. Okay, so you're going to stir in half of the cheese. You are going to preheat your oven to 375 and get a 9 by 3 pan out and grease it. Enchiladas. All right, tortilla mixture. <laughs> Don't do what I just did and spill it. Add it to the tortilla. Wrap that puppy up. Throw it in your greased. Nine by three pan. Lather, rinse, repeat. So you're gonna find the ones that are more well done than the others. You may not wrap as well, but do the best you can. I mean, really, once they're cooked, they're just you won't see. See how that works right there? Yeah, no. That's more of a <laughs> crispy snack rather than an, a tortilla. That's okay. You still put it in there? It'll all work out. This one's nice and flexible. You're basically just going to keep going until you run out of tortillas or mi uh, filling. Alright, there they are. Depending on how you're, you fit yours in, I've squished 12 in here. So, but I squished up the middle quite a bit. So then just add your enchilada sauce. Maybe get a little more because this wasn't quite thin out. This is enough from a, working from a can that I already had open that was quite a bit larger. And where's my spatula? Make sure everything's kind of covered. And then add your cheese, the rest of the cheese that was left over. Put that 
in your oven until for like 20 minutes or until it's bubbly and browning on top.